Hey guys, today we're jumping back into Pixelmator Pro. I'm gonna show you how to take a still image and give it a little bit more life and movement with some motion blur effects. Both of these images we're gonna be working with today can be found on Pixabay. I will link to them both below so you can follow right along. Don't forget to tip your Pixabay creators. Okay, let's just dive right into it. The first image we're gonna be starting with is this parked car. We're gonna add some motion to this image. It's a very classic look to make it look like a car is actually in motion when it's really just static. So the first step is going to be to duplicate this original image in my layers panel. And to do that, I can just hold down the option key, click and drag to duplicate that image. Now I'm going to disable the original image and just focus on the top copy layer. And I'm going to head up to this icon to remove the background. So now we've got the car isolated just that fast. Gotta love that background remover in Pixelmator. Now I'm going to disable that cutout image and enable our background once again. Now I'm gonna make sure I'm selected on that original image and I'm going to hit the F key to add an effect. Then I'm going to grab the add effect button and the first one I'm going to select is this motion effect. I'm gonna crank up the radius here and we can play with the angle. What I'm looking for is for the angle of my motion to really align with the way the car is pointed. So to show you here, if I go kind of straight up and down, that doesn't really make sense. Side to side isn't quite right either because this particular car is sort of catty corner. Now the angle of the blur on this environment looks good to me, except for that sky. The sky really wouldn't have a motion blur on it. We're gonna come back to that at the end. Now the other thing you notice when you add the motion blur to an image is that the edges get very soft. You can kind of see my checkerboard background underneath the edges of my photo. What I'm going to do is grab the arrange tool and I'm going to uncheck the constraint proportions box. And I'm just going to grab the edges of this image and just widen them out to fill in those gaps. Now I'm going to enable my cutout car and already you can see that it feels like there's more motion happening. But this image doesn't look quite right, right? Because if the car was really moving, the wheels would also have the motion blur. So let's remedy that. I'm going to select that cutout copy of the car Let's use the quick selection tool here, and I'm going to select this wheel. And once I have it selected, you can see I kind of went over where I wanna be. Just hold down the option key and use that quick selection tool again, and that will deselect the portions that you don't want. All right, now that I'm all cleaned up, let's head over to select and mask. And here I'm going to dial up the softness so we don't have a super harsh line and I'm going to hit apply. Now let's look over in our layers panel because things don't quite look right. You can see that I've got this wheel perfectly crisp, but the car is all blurry again. So what's happened is that once you mask off part of your image, it disables the original image that you were masking off. So I'm going to show the cutout car to make it visible and then selected on the wheel, I'm going to again hit F to grab the effects tool. And this time I'm going to select the spin effect and I can crank up this amount and you can see it doesn't quite look right, right? It looks like the spin is not originating from the center of the wheel. What I'm going to do is hit this circle button and I'm going to drag this over to my wheel and we can sort of decide how fast we want that wheel to look like it's spinning. I don't wanna to be too unrealistic with it. I think I'm gonna go, let's say 29%. Now let's select our cutout car again. And again, using the quick selection tool, I'm gonna to focus on the back wheel. Again, select and mask. Again, dial up that softness just a hair. We're going to hit apply. Making sure we're selected on the back wheel, I'm going to hit the F key again to bring up effects. We're gonna hit add effect. We're going to hit spin. And again, the position on this, is not right, so I'm gonna drag it over here and bring that up to 29 as well. Again, Pixelmator has disabled our cutout car, so let me enable that. And the last step is just to fix that sky like I promised you we would. I'm gonna select that original image layer and I'm going to duplicate it. And then I'm going to hit the F key to bring up those effects and I'm going to disable the motion blur on that layer. Now I'm going to hit Q to grab that quick selection tool. And I'm just gonna quickly select the sky here. 
And let's grab these mountains for good measure because they seem pretty far away as well. Then I'm going to invert that selection and delete everything else. And there you go. That is the before and after this car more looks like it has movement. But what about something a little bit more challenging like this image? What's going on with this image is that the motion would be in a couple different directions, right? It would be up and down because this man would be jumping up from the floor, but also we would assume that when he started jumping, he had both feet on the floor. And so this leg would also be swinging out sort of at a diagonal. So the motion blur in Pixelmator Pro has a little bit of a limitation with this. Let me show you why and what the workaround is. I'm going to again duplicate this image in my layers panel by holding down the option key and clicking and dragging it. I'm going to disable original image and I'm again going to use the remove background tool to cut out our subject here. Perfect. Now I'm going to duplicate that cutout image. I'm going to enable the background and I'm going to select the middle image of the cutout of our subject. I'm going to hit the F key to bring up the effects and let's add some motion blur to him. Now, by default, the motion blur is going side to side, but we can change the angle to go more vertically, which does make more sense. And I can crank up the radius, but what doesn't really make sense about that is that if he was at the peak of this jump, you really wouldn't have the blur up here, would you? It would be more kind of beneath him. That's really the limitation of the motion blur. The blur always originates from the center. In Pixelmator Pro, you can't really reposition it to be like, let's say beneath the subject, like we would want it to be in this particular case. Let me show you a quick workaround. I'm going to dial down this motion blur because I still wanna have it on there. I just think we need to add a little bit more to this. I'm gonna make yet another copy of our original subject and I'm going to disable everything else in the frame. Now I'm going to use the arrange tool by selecting V and I'm going to rotate this subject so that the longest point of him, let's say from the tip of his toe to the seat of his pants is on the horizontal axis. Let's call it 20 degrees. Now what I'm going to do is use the rectangle selection tool. I'm going to draw the skinniest rectangle from the ball of his foot to the seat of his pants. And I'm looking at the height measurement there. Do you see that? Like we're talking nine pixels. That is good. Now I'm going to hit the invert button to select the inversion of that rectangle. And I'm going to hit the delete key to delete everything else. And then I'm going to hit command D to deselect everything. Now, again, I'm going to go back to the arrange tool, which is V. I'm going to uncheck constrain proportions and I'm going to stretch this image down a bit like so. Now I'm going to change the angle of this to match the angle of our subject's body. Remember, I had changed it to 20 degrees. I'm going to rotate it to negative 20 degrees. And then let's enable the rest of our image. These streaks I just created, I'm going to drop all the way just above my original image layer. Now let's make sure we're selected on those streaks and I'm going to change the blend mode to hard light. And with the arrange tool, I'm gonna to kind of just make sure my width here is sort of matching. And again, selected on this layer, I'm going to hit F for the effects and I'm actually going to add a motion blur to this as well to soften it up a bit. Now I'm going to dial down the opacity on this guy to make it really faint. And then I'm going to take the erase tool and I'm going to make sure my brush size is big as well as the softness is all the way up. And then I'm going to very softly, very carefully erase the majority of those streaks. So they're just kind of pretty tight to our subject. So now we've got more of that motion blur effect beneath this jumping man kind of where it belongs and the angle really matches that angle of his leg. So that is how you can kind of work around the motion blur limitations here in Pixelmator Pro. Are there any other features in Pixelmator Pro you'd like to see a tutorial on? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I have a whole playlist of Pixelmator Pro videos I will link to right here and I'll see you again.